Hi guys, welcome to Fierce and Pretty. Honey here with the third episode on the witchcraft books. So the last time we were talking a little bit about audiobooks and how that format isn't my favorite. So of course I still have a big bunch of uh, actual physical books to talk about in this series. So kind of hoping that it's helpful to someone and sorry for those who think it's boring that my channel is now becoming momentarily a full-on book review channel but it's not gonna last forever but I just really have to talk about all these books quite soon after reading them because after you read so many books the information starts to get mixed in your head and then you don't know anymore in what book that thing was and where it came out because you're just building your core knowledge from these books so to be able to give as honest and true opinion about each book I try to <laughs> do this as soon as I've read them so today's episode we're gonna focus the more modern current day authors writing on the topic of Wicca or initiatory witchcraft. And I'm trying to keep this a bit shorter, so let's just take four books in this one and continue in the next one. So let's start with the first book, and it's Jason Mankey's Transformative Witchcraft. And why I'm starting with this book is because I think that this book is kind of fitted for people who are either working in initiatory witchcraft like Alexandrian or Gardnerian or interested on that, but also the people who are interested on not so strict lineage uh, lines or, or even people who like working kind of solitary or in more free-flowing uh, Covens outside the traditional British lineages because even though uh, Jason Mankey is a Gardnerian witch but in this book he also talks a lot about his other coven which is not uh, a Gardnerian or traditional coven so he has these two kind of different perspectives and for people who certainly know that they are not interested on working, for example, in an or seeking into an, uh, for example, in a Gardnerian coven, this might still be super interesting. It's kind of somewhere in between. This book starts with a really nice look back in the history, and I, I myself really love reading those parts of history and in several books to to get as broad perspective as ever and I know it's a tricky topic because we don't have too many like hardcore facts but at least where we know from is starting from Gerald Gardner's time then we start to get more you know written things doesn't necessarily mean they're all true and facts, but still. Then in Jason Mankey's book, he goes through all the, you know, really traditional ways of working witchcraft, like creating circles, raising energy and things like that. But what I specifically enjoyed in this book is that how he explains, like, in such understandable terms on on what it actually is and means to raise the energy raise the cone of energy and those things so if you have been reading about raising energy or the cone of power but you still can't understand like really what it is and physically how it's done I think I would recommend this book highly for those people. Then also Jason Mankey walks through all the traditional rituals in witchcraft or, or Wicca, but in a way this book is written that it's highly 
inclusive and accepting. It doesn't feel judgy in any way. And I think it's really warm-hearted and, and open-minded, which I think suits the current environment that we live in that seems to be highly important for the majority of people. But let's also take a quick look at the content of this book because I think this is a really densely packed but beautifully written and, and easy and lovely to read in a modern language that wasn't even hard for me as a Finn to, to really read and, and get to the flow of the book. Even though it's a quite thick book, I read it really fast and enjoyed every page of it. So the Jason Mankey's book's content list is like uh, The Origins of Modern Witchcraft, Theories and Other Witchcrafts, Rituals and the Literary Influence. Then the part two is all about the Cone of Power, which I really enjoyed. Then in part three, we have dedications, initiations, elevations. There are several rituals in this book. And there's drawing down the moon in part four. And we're talking about the great rite in part five. And then one impressive part of also this book is the bibli bibliography part where there are also a lot of great ideas for the books to, to read after on, later on, but here you can see all the research behind the book. And this book is 350 pages or something like that. But I absolutely enjoyed Jason Mankey's book. Really nice. Then let's jump into the second book, Wicca by, uh, by Vivian Crowley. And even though I'm saying I'm talking about contemporary books, but books that have come out in 1996 still feel current to me. <laughs> That's just how old I am. I'm going to leave the next episode for the books from the 50s and the 70s. But hey, 96, it's not so long ago. Um, Vivian Crowley uh, has been initiated into Alexandrian witchcraft by Alexanders initially, but transferred to Gardnerian tradition later on if the internet is correct on that base. But again, this book is talking about the basic principles of witchcraft and basic exercises and things to do, doing circles and, and all that that is witchcraft and the basic knowledge of Wicca. But what's different in this book is that it has this highly Jungian approach to everything. So I think that people who like reading tarot in a Jungian style and are into the archetypes and things like that and love to see the world through a more Jungian lens and un understand the concepts better through archetypes, I would recommend Vivian Crowley as a book. Because I think all these books basically talk about the same thing we get a lot of repetition because there aren't, you know, well, of course, you would have an endless amount of spells, but the basic things like casting a circle or raising the power or having your working on the inner planes, working with the astral uh, realms, working with deity, those basic principles keep on coming in every book, no matter what book you choose around Wicca or Witchcraft. But I think the lens often changes. And I personally prefer the books that have a specific angle where they come in, rather than those really listy type of books that just list things, list things, list things, and, and talk them through, but never really um, explaining them thoroughly, like Jason Mankey in the book we just looked in. Or, or then, like Vivian Crowley, coming in from a very Jungian perspective 
because me coming from the tarot background I connected with these things and it gave an, a second perspective but let's take also a quick look of the of the content of also this book and then let's switch to the to the third book the content of the Vivian Crowley book is a lot simpler we got the Wicca today the roots of Wicca witchcraft revisited the circle of being making magic the first initiation opening the door the journey onwards the goddess the god invoking the gods the second initiation the steep path and the third initiation and in the bibliography of this book we also have a lot of also similar but some also different references but I think people should always remember to check also the bibliographs in the books and then the third book witchcrafting by Phyllis Currett and this is the book that I mentioned in my live uh, on my channel anniversary that I never picked out Phyllis is uh, a high priestess in the Ara Wicca tradition and he's actually founded the whole Ara tradition and she is an, uh, an attorney and she also has a lot of videos, to videos talking about Wicca she also has a lot of videos talking about Wicca in YouTube this sh uh, short clips on on what is Wicca and what is this and what is that I can link them down below if you're interested more on Phyllis Court uh, but what I liked especially about this book is that she's talking about the, Wic the Wiccan practices more in shamanic perspective ways uh, her branch that she has created is more using more of these uh, shamanistic techniques that are actually familiar for me because if you've been watching my videos you know I've been getting, getting acquainted with shamanism a lot late year so that perspective made this book really interesting to me and so maybe you have maybe if you have background in shamanism and are interested more about witchcraft then this might be the correct book for you and what I love about this book is when Phyllis she really explains those things like why why to do things and and how and and in this really understandable way kind of same but in a different way than than Jason Mankey in his book so even though this book is written in current style it the text is easy and fluent to read but it took me a bit longer to read this because it made me think so much in between and to me as a Finn I always appreciate books that are also easy to read and understand that that the text is is not overly saturated with with rare words rare adjectives you know trying to be too fancy in a way so that helps at least me a lot when I'm reading but even though this book well it's a pretty standard size book but it took me a longer time because I really wanted to take my time and understand it and one of my favorite bits about this book that I will probably never forget is how she explained the concept of deity like the concept of goddess through a disco ball how the goddess can be one but present many faces like in a disco ball which I talked about already in my one year anniversary video so I won't repeat that story but that was something highly interesting in this book also but I really enjoyed this but let's take a quick look of the content also about this book 
and then the content of Phyllis Carot's Witchcrafting. How to use this book is something which I've seen really common in, in witchcraft books, which is something that I rarely see in other books, and that's always interesting. But it's because of all the exercises and things, practical things that the books include. And I think that's always a good part to read in, in a book if it exists, because then you know where the writer is coming from and what terms they are using to, to describe things. So you are in mutual understanding on what you are reading. But the content of this is real magic, divination, nature, sacred space, the goddess and god, witchcraft without, uh, witchcraft without rules, secrets of spell casting, potions, notions and, and tools, a chapter about energy, about solitary practice, groups and covens, and sabbats. So, quite a round witchcraft book content in this one. Then to the last book of this episode, but definitely not the least book, and it's written by Thorn Mooney, and it's called Traditional Wicca. A Seeker's Guide. So Thorn Mooney, many of us I think might know her from her YouTube content. She is a Gardnerian High Priest and I really love Thorn Mooney's style. How down to earth she is. She has some really, <laughs> I think, Finnish qualities in her. She isn't so American and as I, as I see like the stereotypical American. I think she's so kind of down to earth and in a beautifully, brutally honest way, which I truly respect in her way. And, and so is her writing. It doesn't feel overly fancy. It, it, is, it is what it is. And, and that's the be biggest beauty, I think, in, in her writing. The traditional Wicca is quite different book than the previous ones that we just talked about. This doesn't go through the, the basic Wiccan structures. It's not a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one book, but it is a specific book for seekers. I think that for everybody who's interested in witchcraft and who is considering what is the right path for them, are they interested at the end of seeking their way into a traditional British lineaged initiatory witchcraft coven like Gardnerian, Alexandrian? Is that for them? Is that not for them? Just when you are contemplating your options and especially if you know that you are interested on joining a traditional coven. An absolute yes, yes for this book. Thorne's book gives the what is what and what to do of the processes. What does it mean to be in a coven? How does it work? Would you enjoy the hierarchies or things like that? So it's not gonna, this book is not gonna teach you how to cast a circle, but this is a book that will, that will support you on your journey if you are a seeker and on, on a very practical and also very mental level. It makes you question what are you doing and why? So I highly recommend this one and it ain't super thick. I read this book in, in one day. I just gulped it. It was such a fluent book to read. So extra points from that also. And I think that my my recommendation for people, even though, you know, I'm giving my recommendations and my opinions and I'm no authority on anything. So these are just my opinions after reading these books. What I, plain old nobody who considers herself a seeker on a path with, I don't know what's my destination gonna be. Let's see at the end. So I'm nobody <laughs> of, of nowhere. But, but my recommendation would be 
to seekers who are interested in traditional witchcraft to at least read both of these books. Brian Kane's Initiation into Witchcraft and Thorn Mooney's Seeker's Guide. Because there is no repetition if you read these two. They give you two really different perspectives on the same topic. Brian focuses more on the path of initiation, like on a deeper level and with the deities and what's the tradition all about and has a lot more history in it. And Thorn Mooney's book is kind of more to help you in the here and now, in the everyday mundane life on your way of seeking initiation. So I think book written by an Alexandrian high priest and a book written by a Gardnerian high priestess make a pretty amazing combo for seekers. But let's also take a quick look on Thorne's uh, book's content. In the content of traditional Wicca by Thorne Mooney, I always like reading also the praises in the beginning of modern books and also the olders. But the content in this one, so you get a better view of the content uh, of the book is meeting the Wicca, a different sort of Wicca, why traditional Wicca and, and what is traditional Wicca. And I think that this is a section that many people could benefit from reading today because, you know, after the Scott Cunningham and solitary things and I think that the solitary practice is more common so people might not even really know what what it is the traditional witchcraft so i highly recommend that even for just getting your getting a, getting a rounded opinion on the matter then the chapter two is about the coven three is initiation four is lineage and five is hierarchy and I think this is an important chapter because not everybody is interested in hierarchy. Chapter 6 is experience. Then there's the part 3 about seeking a traditional uh, coven. Finding a coven, becoming a student, succeeding in outer court because uh, there are some covens that use outer court systems, not all of them. And then there's some guidance for the new initiate. Then also there's this part of further reading, which I really appreciated, because this gives titles of different books and a short chapter on what that book is all about. So this was a really well, well done, and even though it's in the back of the book, I, I would recommend on checking it out and checking some of the books out that are on Thormunia's further rating lists. So I at least appreciated that a lot. And by the way, Thormunia's second book, The Witch's Path, Advancing Your Craft at Every Level, is available at least in, in Amazon for pre-orders and <laughs> I can't wait to get mine. It's coming out next fall, but I love Thorns way of writing and truly respect the experience and knowledge she has on top of the personality. So there were some of the contemporary books focused heavily on the Wiccan side and this bunch was filled with only favorites. I actually highly, highly enjoyed reading each and every one of these books so that's why I kind of wanted to bunch them in, in one and same video. Because when I, when I have a huge pile of books, it's sometimes hard to see how I'm going to divide them for these videos. But this was easy because I really enjoyed reading, reading all of this. And these are all books that I could recommend. And at least they fitted my taste. But also to do something a bit different here at the end. I got a new Oracle deck. Kids. I thought it was so cute when I saw it on Saturnarium's garden. So this is the season of the witch, uh, a Samhain oracle. And I'm not a big oracle person, 
But I wanted to get this because it looks so cute. I think this will be something for me to work at the cottage when I get there. And I have never looked through all of these cards. Because I want to keep this kind of a surprising deck. I don't want to be seen what there is. But I'm gonna, you know, pull out one card to end this witch book episode for today. Because I think that this deck fits it like a fits the topic like a glove. We got the card of divination. And what it says, take a breath, take it twice. Insightful reflections are guided by light. And as a tarot geek, I really like that. And I know I've been thinking <laughs> I should be doing because I haven't been, you know, keeping up with my Fountain Tarot 52 reading series. I still remember that, but I've been lacking some time lately. I've been too busy with the cottage preparations, so things have been on hold. But I will be getting back more to divination videos with the tarot once all this hassle here is, is you know, solved. So everything in its time and we will be getting back to more tarot content also at some point. So let's see, the next episode on this series on witchcraft books we will definitely be looking at more older books, going back to 50s, 70s, those books. And somewhere in between also videos will be, I think, heavily influenced with the cottage things, because I'll be getting, uh, it's now a bit over a week left until I get the keys to my cottage. So there's something for me to be really excited and share for those people who are interested and who want to hang out and see. But this was today's book review. Until next time, let me know in the comments if you like these books, have you read them? Any comments, I'd love to hear. Bye guys.